what's our actually um, an experience and actually why I chose to recite what I recited uh, tonight. Some of you might have seen I posted online, uh, you know, spending the day yesterday with, with Brother Muhammad Sultan, who was the longest hunger striker actually in history. Uh, SubhanAllah survived a very, very difficult situation in Egypt. And little did I know he actually had a connection, by the way. He brought apparently Ahmed al Amin, the half of the was telling me, to Valley Ranch Masjid a few years ago, mashallah. Um, and subhanAllah, he's back in America now, mashallah, and he's doing well. And subhanAllah, he shared uh, something very beautiful, uh, many things that were very beautiful, but one of the things that he shared um, that I thought was very significant, and I think it's something, uh, sort of a wake-up call for all of us. Uh, you know, a lot of times, subhanAllah, when, when uh, we feel those moments that we're abandoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that we're not. And um, he was sharing, you know, he showed me something that really deeply moved me. And I think gave me a connection to this surah now that I'll, that, that's even greater than, than what I already felt towards Surah Al-Duha. مَا وَدَعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَ Your Lord has not abandoned you nor forsaken you. Um, when he was in prison, when he was in solitary confinement, the only thing they give you is a mushaf. They give you a Qur'an. And, uh, you know, subhanAllah, as he was there, you know, obviously you can imagine, it's very easy for us to say that we would do nothing but read Qur'an as we're in prison and we're going through hardship. But, um, you know, uh, obviously at times you're going to get distracted and, and especially, you know, the conditions might lead you to a breaking point and a low point. Everyone seems to have that low point. And in his low point, subhanAllah, he was saying that in his low point, he didn't feel like reading Qur'an. He found himself in a situation where he was questioning things, you know, why is this happening and so on and so forth. When things became extremely difficult upon them, and of course his father um, is still in, in, in that situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, free him. Um, and subhanAllah, he, was, uh, he said that he asked for something other than the Qur'an. And they slid him uh, a word search game. And any of you have seen these word search games, you know, you have these categories. So he goes through these categories, and, and subhanAllah, he was showing it to me, actually. Took his pictures, and he kept it. Uh, the, first, the first category was religious wisdom. And so subhanAllah, he picks up the card, and it was, Your Lord has not abandoned you nor forsaken you. And it was from Surah Al-Duha, subhanAllah. The, the one actually Islamic reference in the entire game of religious verses, Bible verses, and Buddha wisdom, and fortune cookies. The one thing they had in there was these verses from Surah Al-Duha. Your Lord has not abandoned you, nor forsaken you. And he told me, subhanAllah, that was his moment where he had goosebumps and shivers, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending that message that when you feel down and when you feel, you know, like, like what's the wisdom of all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you something that, that really reminds you. And, and wallahi, it, 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 it was, you know, he's holding this card. He actually saved it with him. He requested to take it out, take it out with him this English verse even, that your Lord has not abandoned you, nor forsaken you. Um, SubhanAllah was really a very powerful moment uh, for me personally to, to hear that from him and to see that. But, but it's a reminder for us now, when we see that extreme situation now, I, don't, I would assume that none of us have ever been tested with something of that magnitude, being in solitary confinement and prison, especially in those conditions for a very long time. But SubhanAllah, when you hear someone reflect after they've been through uh, what they've been through, you can really take lessons for that in your own capacity, in your own life. And as I was sitting there listening to him tell me about, you know, the things that made them happy, uh, everything that I'd ever complained about just became so minuscule. I, start, I started to sit there and reflect upon the things that made them happy and the things that, that made them complain. And I said, SubhanAllah, the things that I would complain about <laughs> would be these, per these people's luxury. And that is the case for many, many, many people around the world. And it's often, though it's a very simple reminder, we belong to the, the most privileged 1% probably in the entire world. If you were to compare our situation collectively, there's no doubt about it, but on an individual level, if you were to compare us to the rest of the world, we belong to the most privileged 1%. Can you imagine that, subhanAllah, that, you know, that not, we, we are probably in better conditions than, than over 99% of the world. And so it's important for us to always reflect back on these things and to always look back at that. And it's not just, when, when Allah speaks to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it says, مَا وَدَعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى You know, Allah could have revealed that to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a personal uh, revelation. It didn't have to be Qur'an on yutla. 
Quran that would be recited. But Allah wants to send that by extension, that message to us as an ummah, that your Lord has not abandoned you, neither on an individual basis nor collectively as a group. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not abandon his righteous servants and his believers. Rather, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know, tests his servant, he tests him for a reason. And that reason rarely reveals itself in the middle of the test. Usually it comes after the test. In the Ma'al Usri, Yusra. And that's why in the second surah we recited, Surah, to, uh, where, Allah, surah to Sharh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily with hardship comes ease. You know, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu considered these two surahs to be one surah actually, Surah al duha Surah al sharh it's, it's almost, it's like Allah Azza wa lays it all out in Surah al duha and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you in the next surah that verily with hardship comes ease and he reminds you of his favors upon you. There is no way that a person can contribute in society and can, and can feel a sense of empathy and sympathy for others when they're too busy feeling sorry for themselves all the time. The more time you, f you spend feeling sorry for yourself, the less time you have, the less capacity you have internally to give to others. And so one of the ways to treat, and, and this was, again, my Eid khutbah was about this concept of narcissism and how Ramadan combats narcissism. The, the, you know, a way for us to really treat our own uh, self-loathing is to, is to recognize the issues around the world and to contribute, to be always in a state of contribution and, and, and giving and realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not abandoned us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not forsaken us. And subhanAllah, I, I, you know, I, wish I, could, I wish I could tell you all that, that, uh, that I learned uh, sitting with him. You know, I spent uh, five hours with him, subhanAllah, and, and, and five hours listening to, to a person's perspective and reflecting upon uh, the hardship that they were in and the way that they used to remind each other. And truly, subhanAllah, sometimes the best of us comes in these difficult moments. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to burden us beyond our scopes and not to, not to bring us past that breaking point and not to bring us past that, that boiling point. And he told me, he said, subhanAllah, whenever the news, the order came for them uh, to release him, he said that the last two weeks in prison were the hardest, the most difficult. They tortured him so badly in those last two weeks to try to get him to break. And he was remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Like he felt like it was just going to all collapse. They were actually trying to get him to commit suicide. So the prison guards were, were, were pushing him to commit suicide. You know, uh, you, know, get, you know, go ahead and get yourself out of this misery and take us out of our misery. We don't want to de deal with you anymore. And they kept on, and you know, when someone's been tortured uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, and they're hearing from the guards, just go ahead, you know, finish yourself off. You know, give yourself that ease. That, that can, it can, it only takes a moment, right? So they're actually trying to give him the tools to, to just kill himself. Go ahead, take your own life, finish yourself off, finish yourself off. And he said, just when he felt like he couldn't take it anymore, SubhanAllah, those, those cells opened. Now you Allah Allah did not push him beyond his breaking point. Just as he felt like he reached his breaking point, Allah Azza wa Jal opened it up for him. And uh, it's amazing to see someone able to smile and laugh and joke you know, and, and just, uh, and find, find gratitude and thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole time he was, he was saying, he would say it like this, say, Wallahi, Allah was so good to us. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, you know, you're sitting in, in a prison cell and you're in solitary confinement for months and months and months and you're saying, Wallahi, Allah was so good to us. And mentioning these small little things that we take for granted in our lives. This isn't to, to guilt us, although it's natural that we should at times, you know, as the Prophet said, don't look to those that are above you, but look to those below you, and it makes your, your problem seem minuscule. But this is perspective. It's perspective. Allah Azza wa does not abandon His righteous servants. Allah Azza wa does not forsake His righteous servants. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to, to make us, uh, to, never to allow our yaqeen, our certainty in Him or His plan to be compromised. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us the gift of always having husnul dhan billah, always expecting good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and assuming well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us when we think otherwise of Him or think otherwise of His decree. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for the sins that cause our du'as to go unanswered or that cause trials and tragedies to befall us on an individual level or to befall the ummah. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khayran. Um, I don't know if Take, uh, if anyone has any questions related to this, then inshallah ta'ala, that's fine. But otherwise, type. Barakallahu feekum.
I'll take questions after one, Shams. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.